Welcome to a tutorial on using PVSol Premium 2017. This is a beginner's guide uh, to briefly showing you uh, accessing the 3D aspect of the program. Uh, what we've got on screen now is the uh, opening uh, dialog. You've got your past projects and example projects that you can quickly access on the screen. Um, but for this example, uh, we'll be just clicking off a new project, and uh, this will sort of um, have mostly blank uh, spaces to to be filled. The, the the screen that we're now looking, the next screen, uh, does not have to be uh, used. Um, uh, it could be left blank if you wanted to get a quick result, but um, you can certainly uh, complete that second screen, and you can move between these these screens with, with the arrows at the top left left and right arrows or you can just click on the icons at the top uh, but this 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 uh, dialogue uh, is, as I say is, uh, is optional to, to complete we're, we're just going to put a, a logo in uh, one of the spaces there that will appear later if needed in a, a project report uh, as well as other information about the uh, the project you're uh, designing for. Um, but uh, we can move on to uh, uh, the next dialogue, system type, climate and grid, which has got a lot of uh, strategic uh, decisions to, to be made. We're going to keep things simple in this video and just choose um, uh, a PV system um, without electrical appliances or batteries uh, connected to the grid. And uh, we're going to choose um, a location in, in, in Germany for, as, a, as a climate location which can complete, uh, quickly be chosen from the drop-down menus and uh, we can also make some adjustments on the electrical supply. Uh, if they're all correct then we just uh, we leave them as they are. And uh, we can also use this part of the, uh, the dialogue to uh, move between the 2D and 3D modes. We're going to keep it in 3D for this video. Um, so we can then move on into the uh, 3D part uh, after clicking on that, that icon with a little picture of a house and then we click on edit and we're given a choice of the first object that we want to appear in our 3D world. Uh, there's a couple of choices from simple buildings, more complex buildings um, and uh, you can even import a, a map or, or a sketch on, as a floor plan. In this case we're, we're going to choose uh, an open area a simple, uh, if you like, square that'll appear, uh, as you can see on screen, as a dark coloured green area, and there's a sort of wider, sort of a lighter green colour, which represents a wider terrain that we can uh, populate with, with various objects, uh, other buildings, trees, uh, or indeed other open areas. Uh, everything that's put into the 3D environment is, is listed in, in a navigation menu on the left of the screen that helps you quickly find objects and we can choose from various types of buildings and trees uh, and walls and chimneys uh, and say other open areas that can be tilted. Uh, we can move the camera position of our 3D uh, world uh, to various fixed positions and we're just swinging quickly around a few of the compass directions but we're jumping now to overhead view which is useful for setting out uh, dimensioning. Uh, you can actually move pretty much where you like uh, with your mouse, right click with the mouse and move your mouse around uh, and use the wheel of your mouse. You can, uh, as you can see, move move to, to uh, various locations to help you uh, plan out uh, this uh, area. Uh, we're going to say look more closely at this open area which we can right click and edit uh, as, as you can any object you place on the, on the uh, terrain. We're going to make it a bit larger 50 by 50 and we can also change its uh, orientation. We can also do that later uh, even with objects on it. Um, so once we've got uh, our area uh, set up we can move on to the next tab uh, object view where we're focused in on that, that green area. There's a compass top right that sort of reminds us which way is north and south. Um, and 
we can now put objects on. And as you see, there's a tree going on, which starts off looking red coloured, but when it goes green, you can actually drop it on to the open area. We can um, make adjustments to each object, um, and whilst it's on the the the, uh, the open area, or, or even to objects that are not on that open area, using the right click of the the mouse. We can put modules on in two ways, but we're because this is an open area, we're going to choose the module mounting. That means mounted on a frame, and a dialog comes up where we can uh, choose uh, a module. That's going to go on to the frame uh, uh, mounting. We're just using a, a generic module in this case. Lots of adjustments that could be made, but we're going to leave them as they are. Uh, and just quickly uh, click OK to set this uh, sort of module frame up. And that means it's now shown in summary on the top left of the, uh, the screen there. We've got three ways to put these frames on uh, onto this open area. We can drag them on singly where the, the cursor is at the moment and uh, when we say singly, uh, single units which can be adjusted in this case we're choosing 20 modules as, as a single unit and we can click and drag now individual uh, frames on and, and we can just select over it to, to remind us how many modules are there and what the rated output uh, is in this case. So we've deleted that and moving on to show you the fill area. When you choose that, use your mouse, left click and drag down and it will open up an area telling you uh, how, how many modules and what rated uh, output will be uh, in that uh, dotted line that, it, that, you, that is created as you drag the mouse. We're, we're going to remove that and show you the third option, which is basically to completely uh, cover the whole area as much as possible and uh, we can uh, again use uh, left navigation to tell us how many modules were actually on there. That's now deleted, we're just going to use the fill area just to put exactly what we want on, in this case 120 modules in five rows placed where we would like. Once that's uh, positioned um, we can now configure an inverter under module configuration. There's, there's a couple of ways this can be achieved. There's three icons uh, top left there that can be used, but we're, we're just going to use the simplest way in this video, just the left hand uh, icon there uh, opens up uh, uh, a new dialog for configuration. We select uh, a manufacturer possibly, or a couple of manufacturers uh, of inverters, and then we can get a quick result using that arrow. All those green ticks there indicate that's uh, satisfactory. Or we can use the right hand icon to give us uh, many more options and to see uh, a lot more information about these potential configurations that we might choose. Clicking OK, we've, we've chosen one and this will now be represented on screen. Are the colors you see with the different uh, inverters and different maximum power point trackers or the different strings can be shown as each color or highlighted and you'll see the numbers on each module there are unique numbers for each module. There's a cable plan option but not available when they're mounted uh, only available in uh, uh, modules that are parallel to the roof so we'll skip that and come back out of 3D uh, say yes to the shading which is considering all the shading between the rows now and this will allow us to uh, present some um, results on screen. Um, we can put in any cable losses now. This is just showing you a quick way and a, a some uh, sort of total uh, loss under standard test conditions. We can uh, create a, a schematic and uh, that can be uh, adjusted and, and resized in fact if, if needed and in, in different formats it could be exported uh, uh, as uh, a DXF or a bitmap or in even a PDF uh, suitable for uh, uh, possibly emailing. Uh, so with the schematic uh, adjusted uh, there's an economic section which is optional you don't have to, to detail that um, there's plenty of information that could be put in we're just going to quickly add a, a tariff, it's a German tariff that's going to be added. Uh, you can add multiple tariffs so for example in the United Kingdom we could have 
two tariffs, uh, generation and export tariff could be uh, placed there. So we add a tariff, feed-in tariff, if, if, if it's uh, available uh, for a given country. And that will then be uh, considered uh, in the uh, simulation results, which are coming up shortly, uh, after clicking that uh, calculator symbol, second icon from the right. There's a lot of results. Uh, we're just seeing the summary on screen at the moment, the overview, uh, and there's plenty of uh, tables and graphs awaiting you if you care to analyze your system in detail. A lot of this information uh, can be exported out of the program into different formats. Um, the final icon on the right allows you to create reports uh, or, or indeed export uh, all, all the data as, uh, into a spreadsheet. You can export into Word and edit or, or uh, indeed PDF and you can choose what is exported from the program. So thank you for watching. Hopefully that gives you uh, an introduction into 3D with PBSol Premium.